Okay, continuing on with chapter four, we're doing the dance, the earth, moon, sun dance. Section 4.1 is two meanings for year, two meanings for day, two meanings for month, right? There's what we see and use like a calendar and solar day and the lunar phase. And then there's what's actually happening. There's once around, Earth going around uh, Sun, Earth spinning once, Moon orbiting Earth once. Then we got 4.2, why are the wanderers only seen in the zodiac? This is easily explained now that we know that we're heliocentric, right? And then we're now at 4.3, why are there seasons? 4.4, why are moon phases? We're gonna draw a sketch for that. When does each phase rise and set about? How can you predict that and go out and see it? 4.5, if you get the phases, 4.5, why are there eclipses? 4.6, what does the tidal effect do? What does Earth do on moon? Well, it creates moon synchronous orbit, and we'll talk about what that means. And what does moon do on Earth? Well, it creates ocean tides, hence the name tidal effect. The tidal effect does a lot more than that. Let's go back here. Let's talk about why there are seasons. And remember, we only use this model, the Earth-Moon dance. And we're going to take two points of view. There's the point of view of us outside, looking around, looking up at our sky, seeing what we see and trying to make sense of it in the uh, thousands of years prior to modern astronomy and modern times. People had to just piece together what they saw and imagine what was happening. Now, of course, we get to leave the planet. And we get to literally go outside and look at it and take images and figure out what's actually going on. So we're trying to connect that now. Let's go over here and think about the seasons. So in chapter one, we observe the sun. We observe where does it rise? How high does it go around noon? Where does it set? What are the stars behind the sun? We drew this picture, and that's just what people could know as ancients, where they could know where it would rise, how high it went on the meridian, where it sets. Before the meridian, antes meridian, antes de meridian, or past or post the meridian, right? And so that's what we knew. What we want to do in chapter four, what makes that happen, okay? And if you ask a lot of people, they'll say, it must be the distance from the sun. I mean, in summer, we must be closer. That's not correct. Okay? It's not actually the distance, and I'll talk about that in a second. What the answer is, is that the Earth is actually tilted, and I'll show you what that means. 23 and a half degrees. So we'll talk about that. And at 23 and a half degrees, that's a good number to remember. That's how many degrees? 90. Half of that's 45, and about half of that gives us this. So you can have a good sense. Half of 90 is 45, somewhere in there, it's tilted. We're going to talk about Earth being tilted, not 90 degrees, not 45, but somewhere about that as it goes around Earth. So that is the answer. What does it do for us? Well, it changes the sunlight concentration and consequently how much the sunlight warms our uh, Earth's surface. And it also changes the length of day versus night. We're going to do that in the next video. Okay, let's take a little closer look at this. And talk about why it isn't the distance. We know that it's heliocentric. We know that planets move around the sun according to Kepler's laws, and Newton's laws explain this. We know, in fact, that while the orbits are elliptical, they're really close to a circle. They're not eccentric really much at all. And so while Earth can be a little closer and a little farther from sun, in fact, it's not much. And the surprising thing is, we're farthest from sun, not in our winter, but in the northern hemisphere's summer. In fact, on July 4th, when you have your barbecue, there you go, tell your friends, hey, we're farthest from sun, we're at aphelion. And then if we go over here, closest, perihelion, that's around January 4th, so about six months later. It's not noticed, it's not the solstices. Okay? But it's close, close to the solstices. And that's winter in the north. But wait a minute. In the southern hemisphere, they hear January and they say, hey, get out the bathing suit, we're going to the beach. 
And they hear July and they say, let's put on our skis. So why isn't it the distance? Well, because we're on average, Earth is about 93 million miles away, and you know what that's called, one AU, one astronomical unit. And at farthest, we're just an extra one and a half million miles. Compared to 93, that's a little more than 1%. At closest, we're closer by about one and a half million miles. Now, that's a lot of miles, but in, compared to 93 million miles, it isn't significant enough. If Earth was really close, the entire planet would be having summer and uh, a problem. And if the entire Earth was really far away, the entire Earth would freeze, and also a weird planet. And so some planets do have a more eccentric orbit and get much closer. So even though you see these ellipses drawn for the path of the planets, just keep in mind that, in fact, they're very close to circles. And we just draw the exaggerated ellipses to get the point across. But sometimes we miss this point. So it's not the distance, right? In fact, it's Earth's tilt. Earth's tilt gives us more concentration of sunlight if we tilt towards the sun, less if we tilt away. The length of day and night will change. We observe this in chapter one. We observe this as ancient shepherds. But now we get to see why with the drawing. First, let's talk about the concentration of sunlight. So if I've got sunlight here coming in, big light bulb in space is the sun. A star is a big light bulb in space with a luminosity of certain watts. And I try to capture some sunlight on my hand. Well, if I want to catch sunlight with this, I want to tilt towards it like this, tilt my surface towards it. If this is my ground. I'm tilting towards it, I want to catch some rays. If I tilt away from it, the sunlight's going to skim the surface. I'm not going to catch any rays. If this is trying to catch some fish through my net, I want to catch some fish. I want to let the fish swim by. That's not so good. I don't catch as many rays. I catch more rays. If I tilt towards it, I catch more rays on my surface. If I tilt away, I'm catching fewer and fewer rays through that hole, and you can actually project that and see that, okay? So what difference does that make? Well, if I take a magnifying glass and I take that same amount of light that goes through that magnifying glass, and it's like through this hole here, and I take all that light and I concentrate it onto a surface, you know what'll happen, it'll give you more warming. If I have a different lens, and I spread the light out, it's less concentrated and less warming. So that we know, if you take the same amount of light and make it more concentrated, more warming. Less concentrated, less warming, because it's spread out. How can I achieve that? As I said, with the tilt. If you tilt towards the light, you catch more rays. You tilt away, you catch fewer, they skim the surface. It's less concentrated when, it's, when you're tilted away, and it's more concentrated when you're tilted towards. You can think of this by sticking your hand out the window of a moving car. You can catch a lot of wind if you're tilted your hand towards the wind. If you tilt your hand away, you catch less wind. If I tilt towards the light or a fire, my hand gets more warming. I tilt away, I get less warming. And so what difference does this make on Earth? Well, if on Earth you're tilting towards the light, you're catching more rays. But wait, when North is tilting towards the light, South is tilting away. Ah, when we're getting summer, they're getting winter. When South tilts towards the light and catches more rays at the beach, we're catching fewer rays. We're tilted away. Less concentration of light when you're tilted away. More concentration of light when you're tilted towards. So the same light will give more warming, less and less and less and less warming, and more and more and more warming. And that affects our weather, one of the main reasons for seasons. So tilting toward or away from sun will increase or decrease the concentration of sunlight. And that's our number one reason for season. You can look at the 
the book, your, your astronomy coach, and see other pictures and kind of walk through those exercises and get that idea. And just, you could even use a light bulb and tilt your hand towards it or tilt it away and catch some rays. So next, we will talk about the drawing and try to do a drawing on how tilting towards or away from the light changes how long your day is, just like we observed as ancient shepherds in chapter one. Okay, next time.